Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, growing up, my dad was a little bit older. He had a clear-cut favorite fighter. Right, clear cut. It's the man behind me, one of the hardest punchers in boxing history. A man who defined how to carry yourself as the heavyweight champ for a great many. And that's Joe Lewis. Right? It was Joe Lewis who, before a fight against Billy Kahn, came up with the line that's been quoted widely in boxing. He can run but he can't hide, right? It was Joe Lewis who the press started saying was going on a bum of the month club. Lewis was that far ahead of everyone else, right? So the press started calling his opponents bums and whoever the opponent was. However, Lewis demolished them with one of the biggest punches in boxing history. Lewis was the epitome of class. He would say, well, I guess I just had another lucky night, right? Whoever he beat. Well, let me just say this. Thinking about Lewis has me thinking about the biggest punchers pound for pound in the sport right now. I haven't been scientific with this. I've just written down the names of some guys who I think are huge punchers. Because we're talking pound for pound, we're gonna exclude the heavyweight division. Look, I'll concede. Deontay Wilder is one of the biggest punches in the sport, that straight right hand. I'll concede. Anthony Joshua is a gifted puncher with both hands. But we're not counting the heavyweight division. So in no particular order, I'm just going to name guys, and many people are not going to be named here. Because while they're KO artists, I don't think they have the punch these guys have. Right? These are the punchers who can stop traffic. These are the punchers who can be bone tired, can have the fight going against them. They land one or two shots and life has changed. Right? Canelo. Inoue, Anthony Yard. Yes, I know we lost his last fight. You saw the punching power in the 12th round, right? If Yard ever figures out how to use his tools, oh my goodness. Golovkin, Virgil Ortiz, young guy. Gervonta Davis. Right, let's just say we're all happy that Leo Santa Cruz is still alive and is still able to remember his name. Arthur Baturbiev, a guy who needs to fight more often, a guy who opponents look afraid of after the first or second rounds. Well, let me name another guy, and I get the feeling that Older people, people my age, don't know who the guy is. Don't recognize the guy's popularity. Don't realize that this guy is one of the most popular guys in the sport. He belongs on the hardest puncher list pound for pound. His name is Ryan Garcia. 20 and 0, 17 KOs. Now I'm guessing if you're younger, if you're a teenager, you know all about this guy. Let's put him in perspective. And I know this is going to shock some people. I'm just going to name two fighters who are among the very best in the sport pound for pound. Right? Among the very best in the sport pound for pound. Errol Spence. Many of you believe he is the best pound for pound. On Twitter, he has 190,000 followers. 
Again, 190,000 followers. Then there's the man who I consider to be the pound for pound best in the sport right now. Terrence Crawford, right? Just demolished Kell Brook. The ref even gives Kell Brook an opportunity to continue. The fight doesn't go another 30 seconds, right? Terrence Crawford has 205,000 Twitter followers, right? 205,000 Twitter followers. Now, Ryan Garcia, who people over 40 might not even know, has 467,000 Twitter followers. More than twice Errol Spence's number. More than twice Terrence Crawford's number. Right, trainers in the sport know who Ryan Garcia is. But many of them, Abel Sanchez, for example, doesn't feel that Garcia is quite ready right now to compete with some of the big guys. Garcia, of course, believes he's ready. After all, he's an unbeaten fighter with an unbeaten fighter's ego, and he knows he's immensely popular. Right, understand, he's 22 years old. Among his age group, he's extremely popular. So he wants to fight people like Lomachenko, Teofimo Lopez, right? He wants to fight the best out there. He talks about Gravante Davis. He runs off at the mouth. So along comes Luke Campbell, 33. Right? They're fighting for the interim WBC lightweight title. Understand that Campbell has already fought Lomachenko. Campbell has already fought Jorge Linares. Let me point out, by the way, Campbell gave spirited fights in both of those fights. Lomachenko and Linares were both tested. both tested in their fights, right? Campbell ultimately fades at the end. But understand, even when he is getting hit with shots, Campbell is a guy who has a lot of courage, right? He's a southpaw. Understand, an argument can be made that Ryan Garcia at 5'10", has been getting by on youth and size. He's typically bigger than the guys he faces. Well, here he has a crafty southpaw who's 5'9". Let me say this too, and I don't say it lightly. Campbell has the better defense. In my favorites folder right now is the toughest fight. The toughest fight that Ryan Garcia had, right? It's against Carlos Morales. Now, I'll just put it to you this way. I want you, it's a 10 round fight. I want you to fast forward to the midway point of the ninth round. You're gonna notice that Ryan Garcia is spent. He's getting walked down by Carlos Morales. Garcia is on his back foot. Garcia at times looks like he's holding on like Roy Jones held on recently against Mike Tyson. Worse yet, he's getting hit with flush shots by Morales, who, from the middle of the ninth round till the end of the fight, is fearless, doesn't feel, at least very late in the fight, that Ryan Garcia has the power to stop him. Right, they show you the scorecard of one of the television celebrities, right? And he at one point, late in the fight, has Carlos Morales winning something like three rounds in a row. You look at the fight and you say, wow, whoa, 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 wait a moment. If a guy can push Ryan Garcia into the last third of the fight, 
is Ryan Garcia, Mr. 17 KO in 20 fights. Still Ryan Garcia. Right? Given his superior defense, given his superior experience, two and a half to one underdog, Luke Campbell. For those who like experience, for those who like known commodities, seems to be a live underdog. Right? Let's go further here. Let's talk about Ryan Garcia for a moment. Now, Ryan Garcia is a pretty boy. I don't know how else to put it, right? Now, I've seen pretty boys in the past who were actually superstars, right? In the 1980s, middle of the 1980s, there is a stretch there right before Mike Tyson hits the public consciousness, right? There's a stretch there where Hector Camacho, and understand with Camacho, the hair mattered, the robe mattered, the shorts mattered, the socks mattered, the shoes mattered, right? You understood you were looking at a guy who was very conscientious of his self-image. He needed to look a certain way, right? He owned New York City, right? Mark Breland was very popular too. Obviously, Mike Tyson takes it over, right? Because there's the heavyweight champion and then there's everyone else. But understand, Hector Camacho, for a stretch there, was a great fighter. I mean, a great fighter. Right? When he fights Bazooka Lamone, Ray Leonard, another pretty boy, we'll discuss him, was actually one of the color commentators on the telecast. And the other guy says to Ray, I saw the fight as it happened. The other guy says to Ray, who was very popular in the mid 80s, he says, hey, he has fast hands like you. And Ray Leonard humbly said, my hands aren't this fast. Right? Camacho for all of his idiosyncrasies, was a great fighter. Another guy who was a pretty boy was Ray Leonard, right? Understand, people still underestimate Ray Leonard. What I want people to do is to look at Ray's knockout percentage. Understand, Ray Leonard's final acts, apart from the disaster fight against Hector Camacho, right? Apart from the disaster fight against terrible Terry Norris. By the way, Norris and Camacho, I believe, are in the Hall of Fame, or at least should be in the Hall of Fame, right? By the way, that was Ray Leonard's ego. Even as Ray was on his way out the door, he was fighting great fighters. Well, he actually fought for the light heavyweight championship against Donnie Lalonde. Gets dropped in the fight. Gets off the fight, and then in one of Ray Leonard's best moments, ends up dropping Lalonde. Right? When Ray was younger, <laughs> people viewed him as a pretty boy. Understand, you know, my mother, my sister, my dad and I always watch fights. Mom and sister didn't care. But, oh, Ray Leonard's on TV. Mom and sister cared a lot. Let me name another pretty boy. Younger people might not even be aware of this. Weigh-ins used to be ho-hum things, right? If you were betting on the fight, you watched the weigh-in, you thought, okay, let me see if this brother made weight comfortably and stuff like that. There was hardly anybody at weigh-ins. Suddenly, along comes Oscar De La Hoya. Suddenly, the women at weigh-ins outweighed the men at the weigh-in. Suddenly, women started throwing panties on stage. Now, understand, Oscar, good-looking guy, was a Hall of Fame boxer. So, Ryan Garcia, okay, 
He's a good looking guy. Okay. He believes he can beat the best now. Right? He's trying to build a resume. This is the most meaningful fight he's had. Luke Campbell is a tested, legitimate contender who has better defense and who's southpaw and who's tall and who knows how to use his height and who can move around the ring and who has experience going deep in fights. Now, Ryan Garcia has a gift. Few people have the gift. Right? Vitaly Klitschko was one of them. You would watch Vitaly Klitschko. He was standing upright. He seemed to be throwing arm punches. Did not seem to be leading in the shots. And his opponent would hit the canvas. Worse yet, the opponent would be hurt on the canvas. Right? It's not like the opponent slipped on a wet spot. No, the opponent was getting hit with bricks. If you want to see a fight where at a certain point you in the crowd will start yelling, referee, stop the fight. Look at Vitaly Klitschko's fight against Shannon Briggs. Right? My goodness. I mean, Briggs has never looked that beaten up. Ever. Ever. Well, Ryan Garcia... When you watch him, he doesn't seem to be leaning in the shots. He's upright, just like Vitaly Klitschko, right? He's 22. Let's not get carried away. He's not Vitaly Klitschko, right? He'll have to learn some subtleties that come with experience, right? Rolling with punches, leaning away, defense, right? He'll have to learn some things. But understand, he is a blessed puncher. I'm here on YouTube telling you that he belongs on a list of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport with people like Canelo, Golovkin. Right? <laughs> Understand, too, Garcia was a decorated amateur, major prospect in boxing. He fought and beat, according to the judges, not me, but he fought and beat Virgil Ortiz, who I'm putting on this list. Right? He's deceptive. It's kind of like Mariano Rivera in baseball, where you see the easy windup, the relief pitcher. You see the easy windup, and then suddenly the ball comes at you at 95 miles an hour. This guy's leverage is in his legs. It fools the viewer, it fools his opponents. Right? He's a early KO artist. Very heavy hands. Right? The problem is he's not defensively blessed. The problem is there are questions about his stamina. You'll have questions about his stamina once you see from the middle of the ninth round to the end of his fight against Carlos Morales. Understand, Morales goes into the fight with a little bit more than a handful of KOs. I think he had six KOs. But yet he's hitting, and to me, hurting Ryan Garcia, who's unable to block the shots, even though Morales is walking right in on him. Right? And of course, Garcia feels a need to hold on. Does not finish the fight strong. He reminds me and there was blowback. <laughs> there was blowback because I could tell I have some very hardcore boxing fans who watch my videos here online. I committed boxing heresy. I said he reminds me of Alexis Arguello. Now understand, Arguello is a holy grail boxer, just like Joe Lewis, right? He heavy handed, great power. Right? Devastating in the ring. But like Lewis, carried himself like a champion. In other words, if you were a young fighter and you wanted to carry yourself in a classy way, you would look at Alexis Arguello. So I mentioned what I believe is a valid comparison uh, because Alexis Arguello, like Brian Garcia, 
had big power and stood upright. The power was surprising. Right? YouTube Nation was not ready to give Ryan Garcia that kind of respect. So now he's fighting Luke Campbell in Texas. Right now, you should know this about Texas. Mikey Garcia pulls a huge crowd in Texas. Canelo pulls a huge crowd in Texas. Right? Texas, neighbors, Mexico, you have a very vibrant, and I mean very vibrant, Latino boxing fan base in the state. Right? This is kind of like a black comedian going to the Apollo Theater, right, to try to earn his stripes in front of a minority crowd. Well, Ryan Garcia believes he's ready, right? He believes he's ready. So he's taking his talents to Texas to prove it to all of us in front of a very tough opponent who at 33 wants back in, right? His fight against Lomachenko, and I'm talking about Luke Campbell's, hung in the balance. Hung in the balance until Lomachenko's superior physical condition. Lomachenko is a stamina freak took over, right? Just like it did when Loma fought Jorge Linares, right? So Luke Campbell now feels that he has a guy who's green, a guy who's been living off of early chaos, a guy who didn't look that good the last round and a half of the Carlos Morales fight, a guy who hasn't fought, the guys Luke Campbell has fought. Right? So, I'll just put it to you this way. Right? And let's just do the math. Ryan Garcia usually doesn't go the distance. He's trying to prove himself before a very demanding Texas crowd. Right? I know COVID's going to space out the crowd, social distancing. I know a lot of people are going to be watching on TV. Right? Okay, fair enough. But understand, Dallas, Texas is a showcase city. You don't go there unless you're prepared to put on a performance. Right? Ryan Garcia is not there to win a photo finish fight against Luke Campbell. Not only that, Ryan Garcia, because boxers know. Ryan Garcia should know himself that if this fight goes past eight rounds, it's high risk, right? Understand, he had a problem going 10 rounds against Carlos Morales. This is an elimination fight, which should be 12 rounds. The bet I like, and we're trying to get a rate of return, right? I'm not here... I'm not here trying to get a winning percentage. I want a rate of return. So we're going to have to take chances. This is gambling. The bet I like is Ryan Garcia by stoppage. When a young guy is trying to prove himself and he has this level of punching power and he's fighting on a big stage, right? I believe he's going to go all out to get the stoppage. I like Ryan Garcia by stoppage. I'm going to hedge the play with Luke Campbell simply to win. Right? Luke Campbell has to think, okay, I'm fighting a guy who's a major KO threat early. I need to take him to the later rounds. I need to have his stamina problems become an issue. I need to have him reach to hold me like he held Carlos Morales, 
but I'm a KG vet, so I'll know to knock his hands down. I'll know to twist and turn so he can't hold me so I can finish him. So that's the play, but I need for you to understand the risk involved. Right? If Ryan Garcia wins a decision against an Englishman in Dallas, Texas, you lose it all. Right? That's the risk I'm prepared to take. Right? This is a pretty boy out to prove himself against a KG 33-year-old vet who's been in against the best and who wants back in for one final run. This is a compelling fight. It takes place, I believe, January the 2nd. Right? Check your local listings. This fight is worth it. Right? Either Luke Campbell is going to finally emerge on the big stage. And let's be clear, 135, you're talking about a rematch for him against Loma, who needs redemption after getting beaten by Teofimo Lopez. Perhaps Teofimo Lopez is going to say, okay, Luke, you're here now. Let's give this a go. Right? You got Gervonta Davis. I know he lost weight. He was down at 130. You got Gervonta Davis, who I'm sure would not look away from a big fight at 135, right? Let's just say a lot's happening at 135, right? You got Nakatani, who came back against my guy, Felix Verdejo, right? You got Verdejo, who, if he doesn't get knocked out, can beat anyone, in my opinion. Right? Loaded division, major fight, coming out party for Ryan Garcia. I believe this is a must watch. I like Garcia by KO hedged with Luke Campbell. Simply to win, understand the Luke Campbell side of the play pays you better than two to one odds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.